And here we are. Welcome, friends, to another Live Reality Games podcast. I am Kirk, and here we are. I am stoked to talk about the finale of Survivor at UVA Wahoo Warriors that just premiered last night. Was it last? It was just last night. Ah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was such a journey. It felt like forever ago. So anyways, we are here tonight with, right now, two of the three finalists. One might be with us shortly. Ryan, and both of you, it's your second time here. Second or third, I can't remember, Ryan. So Ryan, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. And Margaret, good to see you as well. I had you picked for my winner and oh, so close. Sorry to let you down. <laughs> I still think all three of you deserved it. It was a phenomenal ending to an incredible season of just just an amazing cast. And and Ryan, you know, we've said this a lot in the podcast, and you're gonna say it again. Your editing of this was phenomenal. It had me at the edge of my seats. The times that the votes were deadlocked, uh, the challenges are exciting to watch. If you guys at home have not watched this yet, go over to YouTube, subscribe, check out Survivor UVA. It is phenomenal. It's a great season. You could binge it this next weekend um, in just two days, and you'll enjoy every second of it. So this episode is our final episode. We start with our final five. Ryan and Margaret are with Ellie, Ethan, and the rest of Super Mario Bros. Mario. And this is really where stuff starts to break. I think you guys are starting to think of your end games at this point. Now, maybe you guys can clarify because it's been a little confusing to us at home. Do you remember when you were made aware that it was a final three or a final two? Like how much time in the game did you have to make decisions based on that? I'm almost positive that we were told it was the final three at the very last challenge. So that was the poll challenge. It wasn't edited in directly saying it, but it was like, you'll have a chance to plead your case. Um, so I think we all kind of assumed it was a final three, but it was always a chance that it was two, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, and when we watch it on TV, it's always a final three now. It's just, with some of these live games, we see final twos a lot still, and sometimes that's exciting. I don't know, would that have changed anything for you guys if it was a final two? That's a good question. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't, I stopped thinking that far ahead as soon as I heard it was a final three. <laughs> I'm sure it would change things. <laughs> I, I think that we probably would have gone to the end together anyways is my guess. Yeah, probably. Unless, I think, unless, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's hard to say. Absolutely. That I mean, I was given this question once at a final tribal and I didn't know. How I said, my answer was, I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you say sometimes? But uh, for those of you that haven't watched it, this is going to be full of spoilers and I'm about to spoil the big one. So if you, if you might as well just drop out right now for the, for those of you watching. But Ellie was crowned the winner of this season. She received, I believe it was six total votes. Am I correct? Yes. Margaret got two. And Ryan, unfortunately, you still get, you're still a finalist. You're still a runner up. You're not even third place. You're a runner up. And I think that's, a, <laughs> is that, isn't that a better title? It, it feels good, but it still has a painful sound to it. It was. The, I, I got to tell you, the jury, you guys have been joking with me in all these podcasts because I've been talking about how I love a petty jury. I've been the victim. I've been confronted. I've been a petty juror myself. I've been every side of it, friends. And you guys were the pettiest jury. <laughs> they even had the hats. They even had the hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these guys had costumes. Like, literally. Like, I was, I was stoked. It was pretty. It was pretty good. I know it was brutal for you two. I mean, you, I mean, it's always so tough in that in that situation because you want to be your authentic self, but it's really hard when you're being grilled and and you know attacked in different ways. Um, but 
I felt like both of you owned your games quite well. I thought you were very eloquent. And I think it really came down to, in my opinion, and, and you guys could talk about different things, but I think it really came down to a jury that that was very much in their feelings. And to each their own, I think that's fair, but I think that's part of it. But I could be wrong. And with us is the winner of Survivor at UVA, Ellie Feathertree. Welcome. Here she is. Now, hey, I can kind of hear you guys. Ellie, how does it feel to be the winner of Survivor at UVA season four? What was that? <laughs> how, how does it feel I'm to be the winner? Stage. Okay. Cool. You're with us. You're live on Facebook. Okay. I'm sure it feels damn good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, for those of you at home, Ellie's having some connectivity issues. So she might be um, dropping in and out uh, throughout this. Um, uh, Naomi just said she is a huge fan. Um, <laughs> he wants to take the title from me. It'll be a fist fight. Um, Naomi, I am ready to fist fight you. Uh, I was, I'm a huge fan in, in lots of different ways. I love how you all how you play all played the game consistently from start oh, to finish. Wow. Um, and you know. Ellie, your journey, you talk about your evolution, and I found that to be one of the most interesting parts of your win. Um, how's your audio working, Ellie? Can you hear me? I can kind of hear you. You're asking about my journey with something. <laughs> your, your evolution in the game. You talk about that a lot, and I feel like you became more of a survivor player as the game went on. Yeah. So in the beginning, I remember I was very much like I was super Christian, super evangelical at the time. And I was like, I'm going to do this game without lying at all. And I definitely became more open to doing what I needed to do, but I still wanted to have that resolve of having an as honest a game could. And did you resolve that by by not lying as much, or in other words, maybe maybe your deceptions weren't overt lies, like you were maybe just withholding information? Like, how did you resolve that as a Christian? Yeah, like definitely there's different ways you can conceptualize of a lie. And there, we're always kind of holding things in, like especially I'm really interested in self-growth and spiritual growth and realizing like, am I lying to somebody if I feel like they have tons of narcissistic tendencies? Or am I just recognizing that you got to pick your battles and it's best to be mindful about what you say always? Survivor is just another intense element of where that is so true. So it's like practice for real life in a sense. But yeah, a lie is... I didn't want to tell any blatant outright lies, especially when people are like, oh, I swear on my mother's grave. And then they lie. I'm like, no, that's really not cool because that's supposed to mean something. <laughs> so there were lines you definitely could not cross. You you created those lines and you and you and you stuck to them and I, I find that really honorable Ellie I think that's a great way to play the game and it's cool to see that somebody can win the game um playing it in that vein um oh gosh I have so many questions like regarding that but I, I want to talk 
turn this over to Margaret and Ryan really quick. This is kind of like a jury question. And I, I, I'm just curious, from your opinion, how did Ellie win this game? Hmm. Um, I mean, I think we definitely, I mean, personally, I don't think I did a great job of jury management. That's where I think my flaw would be. Um, there are, I didn't really talk to any of the upperclassmen at all. And I think they comprised a big part of the jury. Same for Margaret, like she talked to them, but she kind of backstabbed them, right? And I, I personally don't blame them for voting for Elliot. If I were a jury, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably vote bitterly too. So I guess that's kind of where it comes from. I think they were just mad at us and Ellie is a very likable person, so. Yeah, I think, Everyone has different opinions on like what a survivor winner should be. I mean, like even if you just like look through the YouTube comments or read Twitter after like a survivor CBS survivor finale, like everyone has different opinions. And so I I just think maybe like I was wrong in the game of what people's opinions would be, but that doesn't like discredit anyone's opinion. I personally don't think I would be a bitter juror, but I just as I think that personally that jurors should not take things personally i don't take the jury votes personally because like you know everyone has the right to their vote so true and i think you're kind of saying what i was thinking too and ellie this might be you know this might be something that's part of what you have to bottle up to sometimes win Survivor, especially in the position you were in. But I was severely underestimating your chance at winning this game. Like like to the point of completely blindsided at the win. Like I, <laughs> I mean, I think I was starting to get the inklings, Ryan, once I started to hear the questions. I mean, once you hear Tommy kind of start with the first question, you kind of get the, the reality check of, oh, wait a second, this is not going the way you think. But for those of you at home that haven't watched it yet, the other thing that occurs in this episode is we have two, you know, two vote outs prior to this and Ellie wins immunity both times, essentially solidifying her spot in the, in the finals and she could not be a target. So even, so I, you know, I'm, I'm just curious, she was so underestimated, you know, were you going to vo still vote out Mario or would you have, maybe turned on Ellie. I'm really curious about that at final four, um, if Ellie doesn't win immunity. Yeah, I was of the opinion that that would have um, happened anyway, the way that it did. Um, I, I would have wanted Mario gone at four anyway, but maybe it would have looked a little bit better for us because it would have looked like we had chosen it, whereas it kind of looked like we were forced into that and that we would not have done it um if she hadn't won immunity yeah that was sorry that was something that was brought up at the final tribal i don't know if it was in the edit but a big part of what they were saying for ellie is that she won her way there and a couple people said that if she hadn't won she wouldn't have been at the end right i kind of disagree because both me and margaret definitely wanted mario gone and so i i mean i don't know I didn't even say, I didn't even like say anything about that. That's something I regret not saying at Final Tribal. I wish I had like, pushed that narrative and been like, Ellie, we were gonna take her anyways because we didn't think she had a chance of winning rather than her just winning because she won the challenge, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, that, that makes a lot of sense, Ryan, to kind of say that that was the intention the entire time, that was part of the plan. Um, I one thing I forgot though I have to say Ellie uh, so so some of you guys know Dustin if you watch the LRG podcast he's my partner he does a few of these as well or most of them actually um he is notoriously bad at winner picks he always picks the first or second or third boots his winner pick for this series was Ellie on episode one and so Dustin congrats to you you win a free buff from our stash downstairs you can go <laughs> grab one yourself i'm like dude it's the it's so it's it, it's so cool so um congrats to you my friend uh so margaret that was really interesting at the challenge like you dropped out of the challenge at the final four and you still were like playing this game and i'm in the chat and i'm like margaret's gonna convince ellie to drop 
She's convinced everybody in the entire game of what to do or not what to do. Sometimes you were just like the extra number they needed, but it happened to always work in your favor. And this was the one time it did not. But I mean, like we're saying, if Ryan wins immunity, you still would have wanted to take, you still would have gone with the same plan. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that we would have gone with the same plan because, you know, when we were talking at final five about like whether or not we should um, vote out Mario, that was kind of the consensus between us was that it would happen at four um, regardless, unless he won immunity. So, so I'm sure you guys have all talked. This is well after this has happened. So, so Mario wins in Mario wins in a Super Mario Bros. Final Three. Is that been talked about with the jury before? I think that was a question that was asked at the reunion to the jury, and I'm pretty sure most of them said that. Or at least the first year said that they would have voted for Mario. So I do think Mario would have won in that scenario. Okay, so interesting Final Four. Um, Andrew has some interesting comments. I mean, it's so notable, Ryan, that you had that flawless game. You got to the finals with not having a single vote cast against you. That is really remarkable in any Survivor or Big Brother game. So kudos to you. That's definitely a Survivor bucket list that many people never get. You also you know, found advantages in this game, created fake advantages. So it was really stunning to watch you really make this game your own. Um, why, you know, at Final Five, you, you had some, you know, different options of just, uh, just, just maybe talk through what you were going through at that point. Uh, this is, this vote, Final Five is by far biggest mistake of the game for me. <laughs> Probably threw my game away that week. And it was, that was brought up so often at the Final Travel Council. So I, it's no doubt in my mind, that's probably my worst move in the game is voting Ethan out. And Ethan and I have talked about it. Ethan like is like, why would you vote me out? He even said in episodes like, why would anyone want to vote me out? Um, I think I'm going to give props to Margaret here. I think a big reason why I didn't vote Ethan out is because uh, she definitely had me thinking that I would be just a massive asshole if I voted her out. <laughs> She would say like, it would be so terrible if we turn on each other over and over again. And I just started to believe it. And I was like, oh man, it's just, she's not gonna wanna be friends with me or anything afterwards. So that is a big reason why I didn't, when, when I couldn't vote for Mario, I didn't flip it onto Margaret because I would have felt really, really terrible. Um, yeah, I, what I wanted was Mario to go. I think that would have been my best move in the game best ideal scenario because then Margaret might have gone home in a 2-2 tie next week, which would have been great for me. I had no blood on my hands. <laughs> um, and, and do, yeah. do you guys know what the challenge would have been if it had been a 2-2 tie? I'm super intrigued by that because that really, I mean, a, as a player, that might impact my decision into what I, I do. I want to say, I feel like it would be either, my prediction was Jenga block stacking because we had okay. had that challenge earlier either that or domino stacking and you have to make a line of dominoes or something it probably would have been one of those two yeah i was thinking that or like some kind of trivia maybe it could have also gone to mm -hmm. yeah. um it's so interesting um it's kind of like an overall question i what was one of your favorite memories in this game like like survivor bucket list style like like you're playing survivor you've always wanted to do it did you achieve something? And what was one of those moments for you? Let's start with uh, Margaret. Do you have any that kind of stick out to you? Oh, I'm trying to think. I might need a sec, Ryan. Yeah. I, have, I have two. One of them I definitely think is probably one of Margaret's too. One, one has to be right after the Tommy vote, just because that was like some we had gone through so many different possible strategies um, and it was like such a big deal to get him out of the game because he was someone that was a big target for us, obviously. So I feel like that's one. And we all like kind of were hanging out after that. We were watching Survivor Maryland. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then my personal favorite moment of the season was finding my idol. That was the best moment I've 
honestly one of my top memories at college anyways it was my birthday and i had found it on my own like i was i didn't even think it was an idol i just picked it up and it was like this brown thing and it said survivor uva and i just started freaking out i texted everyone i even i had a thing in the game where i wouldn't tell anyone anything about the game because i didn't want them to spill to my friends like i wouldn't tell my friends about the game so i accidentally had told them about the idol just out of excitement so <laughs> that's a that's a fun fact but i would say the idol for sure okay i i'm thinking about like before the katie vote like the scramble that i had that morning like i mean at the time it was so stressful and looking back that was so much fun like definitely a top uh college survivor moment so I don't think this like I fully explained it or like it got in like what happened but I mean Mario was calling me like an hour before telling me like the work that he had done all that night basically to save me like and I mean I was like unaware of it until the time but we he was like you need to get Ellie on board for that like because we need you know the votes or whatever and I was calling Ellie and like she wasn't picking up and I was like where is she like we're literally like about to vote like where is she could not find her. So I literally, I knew where her house was because I had been there before. I started like walking to her house. I was like, I'm going to knock on the door. Like what, what else <laughs> I do? Like, and then finally she called me back and we figured it out. But you know, it was stressful at the time, but looking back at that chaos, like that, that was a top moment. Like why was I so intense about it that I was going to walk to her house? <laughs> I love that about you that you're like, I am going to pull up my bootstraps. I'm just going to march <laughs> to this person's house. And yeah. that's, that's, that's why you're sitting at the end of the game, Margaret. That's, that's absolutely one of the reasons because you have that willpower that you're just like, I'm going to try and make this happen. And that's, that's like what we want to watch. That's fascinating. Um, what was a, what was a really low point for you guys in the game? I think uh, after Aaron got voted uh, out, definitely for me, because uh, we were just so confused. I, I got to tell you, um, Ellie, I'm glad that I wasn't sure if your um, audio was working. The Ellie vote is so interesting now that we're talking about evolution, too, because or the Aaron vote, I'm sorry, because Aaron was such she was such a gamer right she was really trying to make moves they just weren't happening the entire game sorry aaron they just weren't you got that one good move before you got out um but what's interesting is when she nods because i rewatched these all of your episodes at least twice and i kind of saw i don't like metaphorically her imbuing her survivor spirit into you at that moment like the second time i watch it and she nods <laughs> and it, it allows you to vote for her. It's almost like she's like, it's okay. I know your journey is going to be better without, without me. And I couldn't understand it until watching the entire finale to understand almost like in hindsight what that moment meant. And it's kind of like your evolution because I saw you really become the, the, the survivor player at that moment, Ellie. <laughs> yes. It was very much like, a compassionate of it's okay and respect it like doing what I had to do even though we were allies like we know we can't both win the game so absolutely and this is where I'm going to disagree a little bit with you Kevin with your final jury speech where you say you know Ellie voted out her friends and so did so did you Margaret however you know the the way that it's done is is different and therefore it's a different way of voting out uh, the same person so i think because ellie clearly was given permission to vote for aaron that's completely different than a normal vote in survivor usually that does not happen <laughs> i've never seen that happen actually i think you are the first one aaron congratulations you can add that to your survivor bucket list um yeah. Any other low moments for you guys that you just you persevered through? Hmm. <laughs> there's, there's not too many. It was overall a very fun experience. If I had to, if I had to choose one, it would probably be um, the merge vote because I felt really, really bad about flipping on Andy even though I, I had been planning on sending him home anyways, <laughs> but the way it happened, um, 
I just felt terrible. And even after he left the game, I like felt so bad that he asked me who flipped and I said it was Kevin. <laughs> and I felt terrible. He didn't find out until the reunion. So Andy, if you're watching, I'm, I apologize. Would any of you play Survivor in the outdoors? Like for twenty four seven for like three four seven thirty nine days. Would you would you do it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Sign me up. Yeah. Right. So like yeah. like like you're in those conditions. The bug bites. You can't fall asleep at night. You you're all about it. I, I think I it would be so fun. Okay. What's that, Ellie? I was all excited this year. yesterday for the first time and so wherever you're at so Ellie we're having recently so I feel pretty dang prepared. Can y'all hear me or am I frozen? You're just you're just cutting in and out right now, Ellie. I'm frozen. Your screen's frozen, but your audio was working just fine. Okay. So as she gets that figured out, let me look back. Um, just this whole season was so good. And Margaret, I thought, you know, it was... Did this it, die? You are definitely no you're 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 here <laughs> you're with us ellie this is so this yes. is screams you from the <laughs> season this is you ellie this is barefoot hula hoop at the challenge where you need to run there's a fairy at the immunity challenge this is you it's it's perfect i love it um uh, the, yeah, this is an interesting thing that goes down in the episode. So you, we had to have a cutaway screen um, during this episode. And this is a note to all Survivor players and Survivor production crew members. Um, things happen. Shit happens in these games. And sometimes um, information gets leaked. You know, one of the biggest Survivor games, Survival Challenge, an actual Survivor, like a person that was on the show, got voted out and then told somebody that was in the game... <laughs> where the idol was this stuff accidentally happened so it I, at final five it sounds like a lot of your game was just fucked ryan Not a, yeah yeah it was uh shocking to say the least were you pissed did we did you cut out something did you scream and yell <laughs> or were you a nice guy i well for one i kind of felt like i couldn't go crazy because Margaret knew about the idol and she did a really good job of, you know, not giving it up because Mario did not know that Margaret knew. So I kind of had to play along with that and be like, Oh, you guys, you guys, you didn't know. Um, I will, she's going to be mad at me, but I kind of want to say it. Um, the production member that spilled my idol is Hannah from the season. <laughs> I feel like that had to be put out there. And <laughs> after, after she did it, she, <laughs> She wrote me this letter and delivered it. Her, she had one of her friends deliver it to me saying how sorry she was. And I obviously could not not forgive her. So I got over it very fast. Absolutely. But, you know, this is crazy. This is what, twice this season now? That not, not just a production, but for somebody outside of the game influencing um, the game by revealing where the idol was. I mean... Uh, is it does it say in the rules for idols that you have to tell production when you find it? I've yes. seen, yeah, so I've seen you have that. to tell Genki. I almost think hosts should maybe maybe there needs to be more production crews. Maybe this is a discussion for for you college survivor boards, but it's like maybe who has access to the information of the hidden advantages in survivor? You might want to like put more of a lockdown on it 
um, because it's it's this is not the only season where this has happened. This has happened quite a few times. I, it makes me really think if this has ever happened on the actual show somehow, because it's it's so easy to make that slip. Um, yeah. Another thing about that is it is like you know just from the production standpoint, like I feel like we're constantly you know with with seasons trying to balance wanting tons of production to be involved because you want it to be a big active club and you want people to know information and, and want to feel like they can be involved as, as a production member who shows up in films and participates but then also if you spread too much information there are risks like we're humans like there are risks of leaks so this definitely is like a debate that comes up um like every season that we produce and i am interested to see how like other college survivors handle it because you know, it's important that people know things, but also that raises a risk. Absolutely. So Margaret, did you get more involved in the club after the season was done? Yes, I was, I've been on like the um, exec board for like three seasons, but I was just on production oh. last season. So yeah. Oh, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. To yeah. Know. Um, yeah. So I think this is a good time to kind of switch switch gears so really quick we're going to just take a little trip down memory lane for us lrg survivor viewers this is our last time that we're going to see some of these contestants and i'm going to try to make this screen share work this time today people so let's see what happens um <laughs> here we are so I, we're going to go back to some of these contestants and what we talked about you you know months ago um some of the fun facts and and if you guys just you know your memories or what you know about these contestants um what they're doing today Fun facts, all that jazz. Here we are, Kevin, our man Kevin, the guy who played too hard too early. <laughs> Kevin, what? Oh man, he's a great guy. He, Kevin, actually, I don't know. It was mentioned the season that we were going to live together. We still live together. So shout out to Kevin. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor makes roommates. Kevin. Indeed, and great friends. <laughs> I was I was I appreciated how again. goofy. Oh going back. Ellie, I, Ellie take it away. I, I Kevin was really goofy. And Ryan's coming up next. I remember he I guess this is already in the show, but he had a Taylor Swift shirt and he had like been to a concert of Taylor Swift and that's pretty cool. Wouldn't get it, but it's pretty neat. Yeah, speaking of these pop stars, it says right here that Kevin had a poster of Ashley Tisdale in his room when he was little because he was in love with Maddie. <laughs> love it. Um, you know, Kevin was always goofy, always eating, always playing hard and, and not afraid to look for idols in front of you guys. I mean, it's so fun to watch. Um, and then going back, back in time to our big Ryan. I don't think any of us really got to talk to Big Ryan because he he was voted out before the tribe swapped. But who knows if things would have been different if um, that weren't the case. He lifted two people, and he'll always be known for that. He works at a gym now. I'm pretty sure I've yeah. seen him there a couple times. <laughs> Ryan, you were he the was the guy with the Taylor Swift shirt. Yeah. You were the meat shield that really never became the meat shield. Um, I would have loved to for you to have been my meat shield, Ryan. I hope I'm you glad he went out early. So glad. <laughs> he would have been tough to deal with at after the merge, don't you think? No. Well, I just wanted to be the only Ryan. So <laughs> <laughs> that made things easier. <laughs> Oh, Margaret. Margaret. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. I love these pictures, by the way, that whoever edited these um, shows. Um, you were self published an adventure novel when you were 11. I'm fascinated by this because I'm an English teacher. I did. I did like NaNoWriMo. Do you know what that is? Absolutely. I've, I have students do it all the time. I was like obsessed with that when I was younger. So I did self publish a book and I sold like 50 copies. Um, no big deal, you know, <laughs> but I actually realized like, um, a few years ago, it was still on Amazon. And I was like, I really got to take that off. Cause it's like 11 year old writing. It's kind of embarrassing. So luckily you can't get a copy anymore. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I was like, I have middle schoolers that might enjoy this. 
Um, Margaret, you were just amazing to watch. You were a fierce competitor. You gave it to us at the confessionals, but you kept it from the players. And I would love to watch you play again. Thank you. <laughs> Never on the same tribe. I, admired, I don't think any of us were on the same tribe. I admired her savageness, I want to say. Like, she was just very fierce and wanted to be known that she was very fierce. She was also the shortest person. So, I, like, wonder if there's, yeah, like, you can always make the joke about, like, the small dog complex. But, no, she was really nice. <laughs> From an editing perspective, she was one of my favorite to edit, probably top one of my top two, just because all of her confessionals were so, so good. She had so many good quotes. And she just brought it at every tribal council. So I, I loved her as the character. Not only tribal council, but also the challenges. I mean, she actually, exactly. she, I like, like I told you, Sarah, I don't know if you'll ever see this someday, but I would have loved to have been a chat against you because I would have been shit talking you right back because I love that in a player and I just love the energy because sometimes it just hypes up your tribe so much. And I know, Sarah, it does piss off everybody else, but it's so fun to watch. Um, Oh, yeah. So Genki said also she was the shortest person and and an amazing speaker. She was very eloquent. And I think, you know, <laughs> to your guys' strategic service, I think it was very smart to get rid of her early on. I think she would have been a pretty big um, threat if she found a way to get a hold of any group of people in that game. Um, cause I also think people, she was so, uh, you know, at times unliked that it's almost a reason to take her further if she's at the merge or something. So that could have been a whole different story. Oh, of course, in our winner, Ellie. <laughs> do you still, Ellie, do you still work on an organic flower farm? No, I think I was too slow of a worker, but I now I work in learning how to, um, yeah, I work with community building and also work on my school bus into a house, which is fun. And my partner will tell you that I'm still very slow at doing things. I love today. that. So wait, you're you're <laughs> building a school bus into a home. Yeah, he's been in the construction industry for a long time. So I'm just like, we need more shelves and try to organize where I can. But it's quite a process. We're spiritual party bus on Instagram. But it's, it's a great time because we own the bus and it's a lot cheaper than a house. <laughs> And there's no black mold. No black mold. No, there is no mold. Yeah. Because we need to. It's, it's good air. <laughs> I love it. You deserve it. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I got um, Dustin and I bought for Christmas um, a lot of people these candles that all have, have these unique flavors. But after you burn the candle, there's seeds and then it grows into a flower and then you have a flower. So you burn the candle in the winter and then in the spring you grow a flower. And then in the summer you have a pot for a new flower. Isn't that? That is so sweet. I, I know. That. I know. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link to the, to the thing. It's really cool. Anyways, um, yeah. moving, moving on from the winner, the fabulous Ellie, we're going to Max looks totally different in this picture. <laughs> I love Max. <laughs> He's just the greatest. I wish I had played with him more. I, I didn't even have his phone number until after the season ended, but uh, he's just such a cool guy. He's just a fun loving guy. He's such a nice, nice person and a good person to be around, I'd say. Max is the best. <laughs> He's so fun to watch. Even when he was down in the dumps, he kept trying. He kept trying to make moves. A lot of my friends thought, uh, Max, if you're watching someday, they thought you were the hottest. So you had that on the cast. Um, 
He's the comedy club guy. Is he still doing sketch comedy? I think so, yeah. Oh, awesome. he, he might yeah. be the president. He might be the president of his sketch comedy club. I'm not sure. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, he has at some point, I don't know. And um, he likes And he does group. his own stuff too. Funny. Like he's always doing random video on on social media that are just funny. <laughs> Um, is he, he's on Instagram? Yeah, that's. Oh, awesome. I'll check that out. Um, uh, yeah, Max, you're, you're fun to watch, but you never could get a leg up in the game. That just happens sometimes, buddy. Um, oh, Hannah, <laughs> I've been calling her, spill the beans, spill the beans is here. Um, <laughs> um, Hannah ate a worm once for $5, everybody. Hannah is our lovely social chair, and she has really upped the fun in our club. So uh, props to Hannah. Fun in and outside of the game. I love that it says, what is she willing to do for $100 if she's willing to eat a worm? <laughs> Probably anything, honestly. Yeah. Hey, Ellie, what did you do with the $100? Me? I guess, yeah. I don't I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> but it was for a good cause. I, like, don't buy many things at all. So it, it was used well. Probably tea bazaar food. There's this restaurant in Charlottesville that's so good, and it's called the Tea Bazaar. So if you're in Charlottesville, Probably. check out the Tea Bazaar. Highly recommended. <laughs> and we're with Ryan. Um, and Ryan, fun fact, in the second grade, he started the Hollywood production of The Art of Knitting for Kids. What is that? <laughs> um, look it up on Amazon. You can see me. I was a young movie star. And my... Uh, film production career just blasted off after that, as you can tell. I love it. I love it. Do, do you really do you knit in it? I do. I, I used to know how to knit and I would knit like scars and I taught people how to do like little fun projects. And now it's a, a meme that everyone, you know, sends to me all the time. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to check this out. <laughs> um, yeah, Ryan, you, uh, Mario, you are not in the jury anymore. Stop being petty. Stop it. <laughs> Mario, the game is over. Yes, you, yes. What did he, he say? Mario, you are the best player. Fourth place is the best. I say that because I've been fourth place twice, Mario. So I agree with that sentiment. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ryan, you played just such an excellent game as well. I felt like you, you earned your way to the end. You worked hard to get there. You never stopped working hard and you did it. And I was so close. You were so close. And, you know, we also are just lucky because you, you gave enough shits to make this into what it was. And it's, it's so such a great season and that's, that's all you. So thank you. I, I always think back to the fact that I was an alternate for the season. I almost didn't even get on. So imagine what would have happened. If they never casted me. Yeah, we might not have seen this. We may never have. I would, I would have blocked Survivor UVA on Instagram. I would have never talked to the gam, them again. It would have been a completely different story. And Sarah gets to the final three and wins unanimously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that our last one? No, I missed one. I was like, there's more. Um, Andy. Oh, yes. Your high school bud. Um, also, remember the fun fact, going back in time, that his uncle was Brendan on Ghost Island, which turned into a little bit of drama, I guess, or rumors in the in the season. What's going on with Andy now? I think he's just living life. Um, I texted him like halfway through the season. I was like, yo, Andy, you should get your uncle to watch because I wanted Survivor players to watch my season. And he never responded, so maybe potentially he watched, but probably not. I, I've heard that he's watching it, but that's all I know. That he watched the season, so 
Oh, good. Well, <laughs> if if you know somebody watching has contact with Brendan Shapiro, send him a message to you because we talk about you a bit in this season. You should should check it out. Um, <laughs> the man, <laughs> myth, the legend. <laughs> Mario, you better not talk bad about him right now. He's listening. Oh, oh, true. oh, oh, oh come on. He, he already said you weren't a movie star. <laughs> yeah, that was some slander. So, um, fun fact Mario's right leg is longer than his left, which maybe um, we can attribute to some of your performance in the challenges. Mario, I'm just 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 saying you dropped pretty quick out of that endurance. Hey, he won two challenges. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's true. Maybe the more social ones, but he, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a threat. He was a threat for sure. And definitely such, you know, such a dominant information threat. He had, he knew so much. Mm -hmm. True. After the season ended, um, me and Mario would just send each other like screenshots of what each other said in the summaries of confessionals. Just like, look what you said about me. <laughs> and it was just really funny. And I didn't, I honestly like didn't know a lot about his game until I watched all of his vlogs and they were very funny and very impressive and enlightening. So thanks for that, Mario. I just wish your audio quality had been a little bit better. <laughs> so, so fun to watch. And I don't know if it was like this, but it looked like playing with Mario was fun. And that's what I loved about it. And I think that's one of his best assets that you can you can bottle up. It's that Survivor, in College Survivor, maybe you're not suffering as much. But let's be honest, the more interviews I, I, I talk to with you guys, there's a different level of hardship you go through in College Survivor. Survivor is always hard to an extent. The nature of the game is tough. But um, College Survivor is tough because it's an endurance. I mean, it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. You guys are... <laughs> you know, there's some players just don't check check off check out or turn off like like you guys here or Mario. So I could see how consuming a game like this can be. But uh, Mario, you always were having fun in the videos we got to see, and I think that energy just brings people to you. And in a game that's so hard to have somebody who's having fun, kind of similar to I thought Max was always having fun too. I I like that vibe. So hope you play again. And we have our dear Peyton. I know that Peyton is, um, I believe in her last year of nursing school. So that's super exciting. So, and, and she's um, roommates with Hannah too. So. So lots of roommates emerging from this season. Exactly. Uh, I, I really liked Peyton always seemed to come across as really authentic to me, to who she was. Just, and it could be, I called her kind of quirky and kind of goofy at the start of the game. I really liked that energy she had. Um, yeah. Fun player to watch. Our boy, Ethan. The surviving six that kind of split. His fault. <laughs> but for the better, for the better. True. Uh, what to say about Ethan? I have been trying to get him to play tennis with me because he's very good at tennis and I want him to give me free lessons, but no luck yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you guys updated if he ever plays with me. Did Ethan stay involved in the, the club or the community? Oh yeah, Ethan comes to stuff. Oh, awesome! Very cool. Mm -hmm. I think we just had overall a very like. I think a lot of people came back and stayed involved, which is yeah. really fun and really nice to see. I that I that makes sense. You could watching this season, you just have such charismatic personalities in different ways um, with a lot of the with a lot of your contestants. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> the one who agreed to be voted out. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> she visited me recently and was talking about her plans to maybe go on a boat, but her love of travel. And she's 
I'm pretty sure she's in Ireland right now with her boyfriend, but we've remained friends and she's doing good. Aaron is just so fun. Great person to be around. I don't think we could ever be survivor allies again after lying to each other's faces so often, <laughs> but I would love to see her play more if she ever gets the chance to, or even be on the real show, who knows. I agree. Aaron would be great on the real show. I, agree. I don't even know if she would want to. I hope she would. You two, yeah. yeah. Ryan, the two of you had a lot of BS sessions where you guys sat and <laughs> talked, and all you did was lie to each other back and forth. It was I, I was scared of her. There were a couple times when she just clocked me and I didn't know what to say. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I I would just start lying. <laughs> I yeah. Aaron was Aaron similar to like Mario at times she would just like blow out the truth like a trumpet and she just like put it out there and it was like oh maybe there was a more subtle way to do that but no no just put it out there why not um it's fascinating to watch and so um best of luck to you with um everything in Ireland yeah. um and kind of taking us back a little ways back to is this this i think the second of uh elimination um hunter Ugh, i wish like just watching this season i really appreciated like hunter's energy that he brought i was like we shouldn't have voted him out like he's so <laughs> fun to watch <laughs> and was fun to play with too he was very fun to play with and he has remained very involved in production which is really cool Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's so even cool. even after being second boot, he's stayed involved and it's awesome. He came into the reunion with some very hot takes after after season four ended up, so that was awesome. Did I is the reunion on YouTube? No, it's in our Google Drive, unedited. <laughs> oh, oh, I was like, I was like, you keep referring to it, and I'm like, oh, I want to see what happened at this. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. You can, Kirk, you can edit it for me. Oh, sure. Why not? I could use an yeah. extra project. What am I going to actually, what am I going to do now? Like, I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, you guys are my thing. You guys are my hobby. And I'm a little sad. This is my last day. I need to, I need to start doing puzzles or something. <laughs> oh, the incredible Lauren. Wow. Uh, she's great. Yeah, awesome. she's great. Lauren I and I had, like a, a few chats afterward. We were like, why did we work with those guys? We should have just like girl powered it up and like taken over and regretted it. <laughs> she was awesome. She's she's just like a very bubbly person, like very confident. And I, I think she's awesome. She was such a good cast. I, I just love when Lauren and Mario get together and like that old friendship, true colors kind of come out. Like when they first had their very first confessional, that's one of my favorite confessionals in the entire season because it's so live and it's so, you can just tell that they trust each other and like each other so much. It, really fun, really bubbly, like you said. Um, she was She was a joy to have. I think I had Lauren on twice. Yeah, she was the only one that came on two weeks in a row. So that was... That was a blast as well, getting to meet you. Um, did she stay, did Lauren stay involved in the club as well? Yeah, Lauren has like stayed involved in some stuff and she's an RA right now too. So love she's involved with that. I love that, that's so cool. Um, it's I think I'm I think I'm gonna encourage all of the, the different podcasts to do this. This is actually kind of a really fun thing <laughs> to have the finalists give us a little update. A little opinion. Where are they now? Type. Yeah. Thing. Where's everybody? Okay. This was my first one. I was really nervous for this one. I remember because it was the first podcast for this series, right? Quinn was the first eliminated. Yeah. Um, yeah, Quinn. All I remember is her threatening um, someone. I can't even remember who. And I wish it was on camera. I think it was maybe Peyton who she threatened. It was like a legit threat saying like if you don't do this you're gone <laughs> she was like a perfect first boot just because of that that's phenomenal like you just remember how you know quinn came out came out trying to make some moves going to the first year residence and having some 
having some taters and and it didn't it didn't work in your favor, Quinn. Too hard, too fast. And I guess you should you just threaten people. <laughs> I'm sure she meant gone. It was definitely metaphorically is what I was gonna say. <laughs> Not like. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Ali? I'm sorry. I talk so much. I keep cutting um, Ellie off every single time. My apologies. Once you're back on talking, Ellie, just take it over. Okay. <laughs> and she's always very funky. Oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And speaking of, totally Tommy. This is where we're at. My He was my winner pick at the start oh. and disappointed me. <laughs> I think Tommy like duped all of us or at least me pretty bad with that fake idol. Like I didn't know until the end of the season that that was him. Like I really thought it was Kevin. So props to him. Like I had no idea. <laughs> he was a little bit too bitter. <laughs> yeah. I will say I, th I personally think that his final travel speech was hypocritical. Just the fact that like he, um, was so happy about Ellie going to rocks and like voting for, or not going to rocks and voting for Aaron. And then he turned to me and he's like, you not going to rocks is cowardice. And I was like, How? what? Oh. But as a person, I like Tommy in the game. I don't know. He's kind of hypocritical. We'll see. That's very true. When you put it that way, Ryan, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's true. <laughs> that's a hypocritical statement. Um, you know, I liked Tommy because he was kind of that scrappy underdog the whole first part of the game because he he couldn't get a leg up, but he he kept trying as well. I really liked watching that energy. I agree the whole fake idol was really effective. It worked out to be kind of like duplicitous and it allowed all the players to make up their own stories about it and juggled things up enough that it, it seemed to cause enough confusion to make some things happen later in the game. So thank you for that, Tommy. And yeah, he was definitely the king of petty. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that was, that was the truth. I mean, what did he say? He had feedback. <laughs> I feel like he was in some like critical, like psych class or like some like compositional class <laughs> to like come to final tribal council and be like, I have notes. Here's my he up. ready. <laughs> yeah, and I this, I have a question for this. Okay, so I don't, this is my opinion. Even though it's College Survivor, I don't know if you should be allowed to write notes. I, I this is a, this is a question I have for you guys here, your finalist. Um, you never had the opportunity to like take notes and bring those to tribal council. So I'm wondering, I just felt like I want you, if you want it to be memorized, I almost want you to take the time to rehearse it. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of my take. Eh. Is it hot? It might be a lukewarm, lukewarm take from Kirk. <laughs> I, I know personally, I didn't want to go in there with a pile of notes because then I think it would seem like I was like cheating a little bit. So I, I, I actually did rehearse a speech a lot. I think I watched like a two hour podcast. I took a lot of notes and then I wrote a speech for Final Tribal and I probably practiced it like 30 times. So. I, I think that's okay. I just think like having, I think he had a cell phone and he was like reading mm -hmm. stuff off of it. I think there's something to be said about your presentation in the moment, the game of Survivor. It's a social game. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But Tommy, you know, I loved you. You know, I loved you. I'm just going to critique. That's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> this is, this is what I do. <laughs> and his BFF in the game, Katie. Well, you know, Katie, Katie got duped. Seemed she like did. <laughs> seemed like she was in a great position. It, it just it just did not. It, she wasn't. <laughs> yeah. All thanks to Margaret and Mario. That Maybe was Mario. Was but that? Margaret. 
I remember texting her that week and being like, because I was just like pulling out straws and I was like, you know, do you want to talk? And she told me no. She was, I think, the one person the entire game that was like, no, I don't, I don't want to talk. So, yeah, I remember being like, wow, she's she is not on my side. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know she's got to go. Exactly. Oh, Genki says Katie robbed. Facts. Well, she she was robbed, but she, I mean, it was it was a blind side. I mean, she was a sacrifice for the season. Yeah, I mean that's true. That's a it's a way to look at kind of the the storyline, the narrative of it. I try I tried to like hype her up as a winner as a winner at it so hard so that when she did go home, it would be just shocking. That was my goal. Yeah, you did you did that so well, Ryan. I mean, I was completely. Uh, perplexed this entire game like I was so sure I was so sure last night that it was Margaret and I mean I mean I mean you were at the end so I I got that right you got two votes so I got I was really close but man the edit just looked like it and the way you guys you know Margaret when you let me ask you this I think we could like come clean with stuff like you were at the very first pot I think it was the first podcast I did for this why were you invited to it? Now I'm so confused. I'm trying to figure out, like, Genki, were you trying to dupe me? Like, I feel like I was blindsided by the production of UVA. Oh, did you think that was, like, a sign, you know, when it got toward the end? Like, oh, the winner on the first podcast or something? Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, be not. <laughs> yeah, because I could not figure out any other reason. I'm like, why... Why is this now? I know Ryan, you appeared, but you were also an editor, so that kind of made sense. So I don't know. I had, I had questions. Good job. Good job. Everybody tricked me. Play Survivor against me. Don't vote me out because you can trick me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's it. So um, I think we talked about this last time a little bit, but what's upcoming for Survivor UVA? Um. Well, we have done eight full seasons that we filmed. One, the first season is partially on YouTube. That's up to Genki to finish. So I'm going to motivate you, Genki, right now. You should go ahead and finish that. Um, other than that, we have some really awesome people that agreed and volunteered to start taking on a new season. And so they're going to be working on that. I can't really give a timeline for that because I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it was not no 4D chess move. It was just what what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just keep an eye out. Hopefully, hopefully our editors will keep working hard. I think they're gonna stick to it. I know it was really hard for me, so I'm gonna keep motivating them. Absolutely. And I think this is one of the things that I want this community to maybe help bridge and maybe Ryan and the other editors. I would love for there to be a way for you guys to kind of connect, share knowledge. I know we have some groups um, on our live reality game page on Facebook that you can join. Um, one is for production, but I think specifically editors just don't, if you're not an editor, you don't understand the process. You don't understand all of the, the lingo and the minutia and the, the, the work load that goes in. And I do know that some editors have been sharing a lot. Like you hear a lot of maybe a similar music being used in different survivor episodes, but that's one of the ways that we can work together to support each other's stuff because in the long run, all we're doing is helping lift up CBS and Survivor because we emulate the stuff we wanna do. And you know, only a handful of people ever get to be on the show. So this is our chance to do it ourselves. So um, uh, Ellie, you know, you're amazing. Thank you so much for, for joining us, bopping in and out. And I hope you have a lot of adventures on your spiritual bus. Margaret, it was it was awesome meeting you and watching you, and I hope the best for you. And same for you, Ryan. I hope you guys continue creating great stuff at UVA with Survivor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For thanks you. for thank you so much for doing all this, putting in the time and watching and giving your thoughts. It it was really nice and good to hear. I watched all the podcasts, so it was really fun seeing what your thoughts were. Thanks, Ryan. And I watched all your episodes twice. So. <laughs> <laughs> to each their own give and take. Uh, I'm gonna miss you guys a little bit. In, in some ways, too. Like you guys are my like my social, you know, getaway now. 
with not yeah. not going to the bar or anything. So it's it's, it's really fun to just get together and, and to meet new people. So, um, yeah. So if people wanted to follow you, if you're a person like that, how would they how would they follow you? I'm just Margaret Brame, my name on everything. So perfect, cool. He's lucky. I am Rye Anderson fourteen. So take the Ryan and Anderson, combine it, and then put fourteen at the end. Oh yeah, That's Rye, Rye Anderson fourteen. Yep, totally. Yep. Um, and you know I'm at Live Reality Games or Kirk Carlson or Kirk P Carlson. Just look in different places. Thanks, guys, and mm -hmm. we will see you next time on another Live Reality Game podcast.